All right, uh, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Snowflake Summit, and look who are with me, Matt, uh, CEO of at Immuta. Matt, welcome to the Robert Show. Thanks, man. I appreciate having me again. Yes, uh, not a new face. We last year discussed about so many different things that we were doing. Uh, uh, you know, at Snowflake, Immuta was, um, you know, all over. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have also met a few customers, partners, and great things they all were doing in the space. Uh, this year again, uh, first of all, this morning, there's a press release that went out. Great mm -hmm. announcements mm -hmm. that you all have made. Uh, would love to know a little bit about that. Uh, would you like to share with the audience? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, what, what we announced this morning was kind of three major pieces of our future. So first is we ushered into our, our I call it our second era. Um, but it's all around policy exceptions. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea behind it is what we've learned from our customers is, is that as generative AI has exploded, the first thing that's happened, to, everyone's become a data consumer. Exactly. And so we've kind of seen our customers go from like a thousand potential people querying data every day to like 10,000 or 100,000. So true. Right? And so, but the problem is, is when anyone can potentially access data because they don't have to write code anymore, uh, how do I get access to it? I can't use tickets. And so, because there's just too many tickets, there's not enough people to approve them. So we built workflows to be able to allow people to request access and then get exceptions to policy and crowdsource it. The second thing we did though, when you have that many people asking questions for data, um, is we had to add AI. And mm. so what we did is we added a review process and we can assess the risk of that approval. So we're Very helping important. these approvers say, is this high risk, medium risk, low risk, so they can rapidly approve thousands of tickets at once. Um, and then the third thing is our, our MCP server, but we're going to be doing a lot more Agentic. Mm. And the MCP server was the first way where you could hook up Claude or ChatGPT and start to approve tickets and actually provision data. That's nice. So I think a uh, review process itself is such an important piece uh, in the enterprise world because I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders and they have like... One thing first and foremost thing that they are kind of concerned is about data security when it mm -hmm. comes to AI. Like, they're like, if we don't have the security in place, uh, we can't go ahead in the AI implementation game. So well done on that. Congratulations on all the yeah, great uh, announcements there. I'm kind of also curious to know, you know, what's the breaking point moment when enterprise readers realize, you know, legacy data access models simply can't scale with AI demands? Uh, and how is Immuta kind of taking uh, that next step to help them? Yeah, sure, it's a good question. Um, I don't think it, there's any one size or any one moment. I think what it is is when organizations start to get to the level of complexity where they have many different business units wanting direct access to their warehouses or their databases or their storage, at the point where you get from like one to two to three business units requesting mm -hmm. it, all of a sudden those domains start to get difficult to manage. So you have to start thinking about how do I set up a data mesh or a data fabric? Right. How do I decentralize? How do I, who governs that data? Who approves it? And at that point, there needs to be structure around it. Um, but like the magic number I would say is, is like it's the combination of the number of like business units and then the yep. number of data consumers. Once you get over a thousand data consumers hitting you every day, when that's going to scale real fast and then things break. So that's kind of where we insert ourselves right. to help optimize that data provisioning flow and you know, kind of take humans out of it and let software start driving it. Okay, that's fantastic. Great insights there, Matt. Uh, also, quick question, since we are on this topic of AI and agents and agent tech has been one of the mm -hmm. key topics uh, la since last year and this year, it has yep. kind of, you know, obviously uh, become much more real. Uh, you're betting Immuta's future on agentic data provisioning. So, uh, kind of wanting to learn a little bit about that, can you walk us through what a uh, world without data access tickets uh, actually look like? Yeah, yeah, so there's kind of two parts to that. Yeah. So the first is, is you gotta think about uh, the world where agents are requesting access to data, right? Mm -hmm. And you have all, like, all these consumers requesting access to data. So you have human and non-humans exactly. trying to get access, right? There's just too many tickets too many approvals, you're talking millions of them. Mm. So we need the ability, one, for humans to be able to interface and leverage agents to look through approvals and start kind of removing the toil, the low risk, right? If 900,000 out of a million tickets are low risk, let an agent go do that and handle that, right? Exactly. So building our own agentic uh, governor to actually approve mm. access requests is kind of our future. And the way we're gonna do that is by crowdsourcing all the requests. So mm -hmm. as someone, a data consumer requests access, and then a human that approves, each company we're gonna build 
its own agentic governor on their risk tolerance, on their data, and make mm. those decisions. Um, and our goal is to have that out by uh, January, February. Wow, that's uh, pretty not that far. Uh, no, so no. so we are excited no. about that. And uh, you mentioned a very important point around crowd. Uh, you know, obviously making more accessible, uh, but at the same time uh, helping you know enterprise leaders to also use agents. And I like the you know the human and uh, the agent space as well. Uh, one more quick question that I had for you was for around the data leaders who are watching this, or who are drawing in access requests right now, uh, what's one thing that you would advise them that they should be doing it differently? Yeah, I don't think it's one thing. It's, it's I call it the big six, but big you can six. break it down to the big three if you want. Okay. The one is established domains, which is just a, a basic principle, but it's creating structure around the data that you have and your organizations they have, because you need to separate the people from the data. Um, the second is approval workflows. Who approves access to what data? How mm. do you establish those workflows? Um, three is classification frameworks. So you kind of have to simplify the risk. Is it high, medium, low? Is it risk tolerance one, two, three? Right. Is it red, green, amber, right? Like, but come up with a system to classify your data and then get global policies built on them. Mm. And then from there, you can then unify audit. And then finally, the, the sixth is you need to recertify. So if you're giving access to a lot of people, you need to continuously take it away. Mm. And so there's this whole recertification process. And I call that the big six. Big six. And the CDOs and CIOs need to start thinking in the big six and start implementing it. I love it. Uh, this is exactly, I think, uh, what you know, even the enterprise leaders should be thinking about when it's kind of, you know, obviously the implementation process, but even when they're kind of thinking about, you know, the agentic process yeah. uh, and to get more into the AI piece. Uh, I love it. Uh, one quick question and last one, I promise. Yes. And this is more about uh, what can we expect this year? Uh, we are here at Snowflake uh, Summit and uh, what are customers most excited about? I think what most customers are excited about right now is the the actual movement to an agentic enterprise. I think that's what I think we heard last year was a Gen AI movement. Yeah. Gen AI through co-pilots have kind of lowered the technical barrier of entry for people to be able to leverage data. Mm -hmm. Now this year it's going to be based off of more and more people accessing data and using it and doing things with it. Now all of a sudden there's going to be these wave of agents and I think everyone wants to deploy these agents now. I love it. Uh, thanks, Matt, for all the great insights. I can't wait to uh, see all the announcements that are going to come uh, this year and uh, can't wait to see everything going live as well. Uh, I know people can follow uh, Immuta page to be updated and they can follow mm -hmm. all the blogs that you all release. Uh, but can they follow you on LinkedIn to yeah. stay updated? Yeah, yeah, follow me on LinkedIn. I, I'm very social. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Matt, uh, such a pleasure. Again, hosting you on The Robert Show and uh, we'll keep the conversation going. All right, thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.